Hi everyone, Rob from Frugal Radio here. Welcome to the channel where we explore the magic and mystery of radio. If you are interested in radio communications, software defined radios and wallet friendly monitoring solutions, you're in the right place. If you're new to the channel and not yet a subscriber, a special welcome to you today. Back in the early days of this YouTube channel, I made a few videos about the U-Loop passive magnetic loop antenna. I found that it worked well on VLF, through long and medium wave and up into the HF spectrum. If you haven't seen my previous videos on it, be sure to have a look. A link is included in the description below to my U-Loop playlist. In case you're wondering, the general gist is that I've been pleasantly surprised at how capable this portable antenna is. The fact that it's still available for a mere 35 US dollars is a real bonus. Now if you're thinking about purchasing one of these, it seems there are a bunch of fakes on the market, so I've placed some links in the description below to make sure you can get the genuine products. This antenna has allowed me to listen in to amateur radio communications, transmissions from United States Air Force aircraft and air bases, to decode HF data link signals, monitor shortwave broadcasts and so much more. However, one question from viewers keeps coming up. Does the U-Loop work on VHF? I didn't know the answer until today and following a series of tests, I'm here to share the answer. Although the U-Loop is designed for use on HF, it has surprised me several times. First with the excellent VLF reception, secondly with its ability to work with an RTL SDR version 3 in direct sampling mode. Like many of you, I had read online that the U-Loop can perform in the VHF spectrum as a folded dipole. There are a few details about it on the AirSpy website. I figured it was about time I gave it a shot. So on a lazy Sunday afternoon, I strung the U-Loop up in my shack and connected it to my most frequently used software to find radio. I used an old laptop running SDR Sharp. This was connected to an old USB extension cable so that I could position a software to find radio close to the U-Loop. For today's experiments, I grabbed the highly capable and versatile RTL SDR version 3 dongle. If you're unfamiliar with this SDR, check out some of my other episodes where you'll discover just how incredible this device is. The RTL SDR dongle was connected directly to the U-Loop using the coax that was supplied with the antenna. And, as you can see, there was nothing fancy in this setup. No filters, no LNAs, just a laptop, USB extension cord, SDR and the U-Loop. You'll notice that I did not compress the U-Loop to form the shape of a folded dipole. I simply hung it on the top of the closet door. Also noteworthy is the fact that today's experiments were conducted indoors in a room with six computers, four of which were powered on at the time. Regular viewers will know that I'm a fan of airband communications. So I first tuned in to the local Aerodrome Terminal Information Service, or ATIS. The transmitter is down at the International Airport, 11 miles away from my location. I didn't know if I was likely to receive anything, but immediately the signal came through. Not bad for a hastily positioned U-Loop. Landing and departing runway 02 and runway 12. Inform ATC that you have information gone. Next, I tried the ground and clearance frequency. Within a couple of minutes, a helicopter called up looking to taxi to another part of the apron for hover checks. Edmonton ground, Valkyrie 62 is gone. Valkyrie 62, Edmonton ground, today, current flight variable at 6986. Squawk code for your flight is 3350, verify your mission. 3350 for Valkyrie 62, we'd like, uh, we're on apron 2, we'd like to taxi to Sierra for hover checks. Uh, and then we'll be looking to depart on uh, runway 02 northbound. As I moved further up the VHF band, I was experiencing a lot of interference. I put this down to the computers in the shack. Right then, one of the monitors went into standby mode and a lot of the QRM disappeared. There were still some spikes across the display, but less than before. Since my USB cable was running right alongside the HDMI cable that was powering the monitor, I disconnected it and powered off the screen and continued working up the band. A DMR repeater fired up on 153.095 and was visible on the display. The signal appeared to be reasonably clear. 
A little further up, I spotted a known signal on 153.62 MHz. This is a Nextend 9600 baud control channel for one of the sites of a provincial natural gas company. On 156.24 MHz, I have a fire repeater that's linked to several rural fire departments. It does not present a particularly strong signal, but the ULOOP managed to pull it in fairly well. The audio was easily readable. Station 262.4 is my local weather radio frequency. It is transmitted from a tower downtown and provides a strong signal. Unfortunately, the audio has been dropping from the signal recently, and today was no exception. Despite it being a carrier signal only, the signal-to-noise ratio was a whopping 43 dB. There isn't a great deal of activity between 164 and 174 MHz in my area, but my curiosity was now piqued. If the ULOOP could work on VHF, would it pull in signals on UHF too? Most of the UHF traffic in my area is digital, so I jumped to the 410 MHz region where there is a known DMR system. As you can see, the control channel came in loud and clear. This is a strong signal from another area of the city. I can receive it on a portable DMR radio with the rubber duck antenna from home. So it wasn't much of a surprise that the signal appeared strong on the waterfall. Next, I wanted to try the 420 to 450 MHz part of the spectrum, as I have several digital networks within range. The ULOOP had no problem receiving a 422 MHz next end control channel, and I could see the voice channels on the trunk systems firing up. 30 MHz higher, there are a bunch of DMR channels. Some are control channels, others are repeaters. The ULOOP was able to pull them in. At 455.6625, I can pick up an FM radio station link. This carries the output from the studio to the transmitter site for rebroadcast. It was received loud and clear. So what would that mean for 7 and 800 MHz? Could the ULOOP work there too? I jumped up to a local P25 public safety system. The control channel and voice channels were clearly visible on the display. This was a surprise. Yes, they are strong signals in my city, but this antenna is really not optimized for these frequencies. How about 850 MHz signals then? A quick look revealed two control channels, one for a DMR system and another for Nexten. There are two other DMR control channels in this area of spectrum, but the ULOOP was unable to receive them. It was finally starting to show that it was operating well outside of its design range. Honestly, I was rather impressed that the ULOOP pulled in these signals at all. Sure, I live in a city, so there are multiple trunk networks and repeaters around, but we have to remember, the ULOOP is a small HF portable antenna. Next I tried decoding digital voice using DSD Plus across the different frequency ranges. Using the same laptop, SDR and the ULOOP, I started with the strong DMR system at 410 MHz in the UHF band. As you can see, DSD Plus had no problem decoding the data and resolving the voice signals. The 153 MHz utility system was next. Again, no problem. The software started displaying the control channel data immediately. There wasn't much activity taking place on the 451 MHz DMR trunk system, but a DMR repeater at a hotel 13 miles away came in loud and clear. Retuning to the 770 MHz public safety band, I locked on to a simulcast site control channel and the data started flowing instantly. Voice traffic was also decoded easily. Copy that. All units responding to you. number uh, Can I return to service? Uh, EMS, if they're monitoring the station or the channel, can continue to return and respond. Further up in the 850 MHz band, the ULOOP allowed decoding of the DMR channel and the next end control channel data. Well, it turns out the ULOOP certainly allows reception in the airband, VHF, 
and the four 700 and 800 megahertz bands too. I didn't think it would be able to receive as many signals as it did, but after a couple of years with the ULUB, I'm quite happy with what it can do. Would I use it for a DX or as my main shack antenna? No, and I would still use regular antennas cut for the frequencies that I'm wanting to listen to. But as a portable antenna that will allow me to monitor quite a range of different frequencies, it's proving itself to be more versatile than I had expected. I hope today's video has been useful for you. If it has, please be sure to hit the like button. If you own a ULOOP, would you consider helping other potential buyers by sharing your positive and negative experiences in the comment section below. You can also comment if this video has been helpful to you. A big thanks goes out to all my current subscribers for following along with the channel. It's great to have you here again. And if you're not yet a subscriber, please help me out by subbing and enabling notifications. It would be great to see the channel and community grow some more. Lastly, thanks for watching today and I'll see you in the next one. This is Frugal Radio, out.